doesn't matter if you're a musician or you're an artist or you're an architect or whatever, there's always the ego inflation challenge that will come in. But on the spiritual path, it's particularly deadly. If you start thinking, you know, I'm, I'm the guru now type of thing. First thing people need to realize is that the whole thing of coming forward as a spiritual teacher or a guru or in the sense of the Rosicrucian tradition, it's really just like a brother or sister on the path and I'm sharing with you what I found and hopefully it's useful. But it's not positioning oneself at a, at a high level or above others. But there's always the, the challenge when we are uh, doing this work to think that we're more evolved than we are, that our work is tremendously advanced, and we accept that appreciation and kudos from other people in such a way that it works on their naive expectation that we described before, that if you have some development in some area, you're developed in all areas. No, you're not developed in any area other than the one that's being focused on. You may be a good speaker, you may be a good architect, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that you've worked through your emotional, sexual, whatever other stuff that keeps tripping people up. So when we deal with these initiation trials, it is absolutely one of the first trials that we will encounter of once you start to get a little bit of spiritual understanding, get a little bit of some spiritual siddhas, these kinds of things that we then present ourselves at a higher level. And this has all types of manifestations we have to be careful about. So on the one hand, one can choose to change one's name to reflect their true spiritual nature and their, their goal, their destination. But we have to be very careful that in that name that we choose, we're not choosing something that represents us as a master of a very high level when in fact we're still dealing with some real core human stuff in this lifetime that we're trying to get right. So, you know, taking on certain titles, changing of the name to certain things, if we're not careful about it, it can be a claim to authority. And when you make too many claims to authority, you leave people unfree. You've got to leave them free. The whole thing in the Rosicrucian tradition is that, you know, if you're born Joe Slobotnik, you're just Joe Slobotnik. <laughs> And people can think that you're spiritually advanced or not, but you're not making any claims toward it. So claims to authority are one part of it, a practical thing to be very, very careful of. Uh, I don't even make any claims like for myself that I like, like I don't claim that I speak for the Rosicrucian tradition or like I'm any great Rosicrucian initiate. I'm a person on the path and I found some things that other people reflect to me are useful. Uh, but other than that, I know all the parts of me that aren't developed yet and that I'm still doing all kinds of wacky stuff all the time so that I can develop on my own pathway forward. So that, that's a part of it. Another part of it is that if we start making those improper claims to authority, we're representing ourselves as more advanced than we are, again, taking advantage of people's naive expectations, then this will not only hinder our own development, it will change the spiritual beings that we're connecting with. Because spiritual beings never give their authority or their gifts to someone on a permanent basis. It's often misrepresented. It's absolutely a falsehood when in any spiritual thing they say, oh, this church or this tradition is the lineage holder of this thing and that's permanent. No, as soon as someone who is guiding that particular lineage or tradition becomes corrupt, the beings will leave. They're not going to stay when it becomes corrupt. I think this is even true in some of the, the Christian traditions that claim like, oh, we're the heirs of blah, blah, blah. Well, hey, you lost those connections a thousand years ago through the terrible manipulations that you did in the world. So any spiritual tradition, any spiritual person can lose the spiritual connections that they had because behind our work is always the inspiration and the support of spiritual beings and based on our own levels of integrity and how clean our work is that's going to affect what beings connect to us once we start getting more manipulative etc and believing our own ego inflation we'll get different beings coming in and you can actually, when you observe certain people who are very well-known spiritual teachers in the West, 
Uh, and their early work seemed really good. Look at them 15 years later, and they're like a demon. It's just like their stuff has become so corrupt. Their, the whole energy in their field has become something very toxic. So we have to be aware that it's all a system of resonance. What we're connecting to spiritually, including the spiritual beings that are behind everyone, will change as soon as we change that vibration. It's never given permanently. So I think that's another very important consideration. As we're evaluating ourselves on that path, we have to always stop, take stock, see where we've made mistakes, because we always will make mistakes. It's not like, well, I'm always perfect and I never make a mistake with this. Being conscious of it helps to not make the mistake. But what it really helps with is noticing when you did make the mistake and starting to correct. Again, I don't always see the line until I'm over it. And then I got to come back to the middle way. So these are considerations not just for people who are spiritual teachers or things of that kind, but really for every human being. One of the great gifts of the last couple of generations of human beings on the planet, particularly in the West, has been a movement toward authenticity, that it's okay to represent what parts of oneself are broken. It's okay to represent what parts of oneself are still moving forward and not having to claim some artificial form of perfection. So I think that's actually a very, very healthy movement. Again, it's always a middle path, so you don't want to go off the other direction to where you just like constantly kvetching about all the problems you have in your life and that type of thing. That's not helping anybody. But to be authentic about where we actually are and to try to keep it as, as clean as possible and not overclaim uh, will not only make our work better, but it will help to connect people to the beings they need to connect to. Because lots of times when people connect to us through the things that we're teaching or talking about, I try to get myself out of it as much as possible. The whole thing about the Rosicrucian tradition from the beginning was that we're not connecting through an external authority. You're not connecting through an external institution. There's no organization you have to join. There are many so-called Rosicrucian organizations in the world, often set up on the lines of Masonic lodges where they have different grades and initiations. I have nothing to do with any of that. I want to make really clear when I talk about Rosicrucianism, my style of that is the original Rosicrucianism where every person is connecting through the column of spirit above the head directly to the spiritual world and to the spiritual beings of their team. They're not going through any human being or any external institution. There may be other spiritual beings helping with it, but it's not based on going through someone else. So it's very important to me that everything that I teach people doesn't make them dependent on me and that I teach them how to connect directly up in their own columns, not through me or somebody else or some organization or institution. Now, again, there are some organizations and institutions in the world that's, that do have spiritual integrity, and if you choose to work in that and that helps you on the path, that's absolutely fine. I'm talking about my choice. I want to be able to go through the prodigal son aspects that I need to go through and not claim that I'm not doing that. I'm going to make mistakes, and I'm going to explore all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so don't connect through me. You connect directly. And that, to me, is the whole purpose of independent initiation on the Rosicrucian path. And so the more I can get people to understand that as one of their options, then I feel like I've, I've been helpful on that. But lots of times when people connect in something I'm saying, it's like that whole saying about when you see the finger pointing to heaven, don't focus on the finger focus on where they're pointing toward. Because sometimes when I'm talking about a topic, this is true for other people teaching spiritual things, there is an energy that comes through that's not me, it's something of a higher level if I have any integrity that's coming through me at that time. Don't try to connect to that thing through me, connect to it directly, but learn through the energy present at that moment what the vibration of it is so you can resonate with and entrain to it and then connect to it directly at the time.